Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a custom header for your Twitter business profile page. We'll be using GIMP 2.10 to create the custom header. Okay, so let's quickly open up uh, the web browser and you can see my Twitter profile here. You can see this image, this just this generic image I put on Twitter profile. If I click on it, we wanna make an image which is exactly this size here, this large size here. And we're gonna use GIMP to do that. So let's go ahead and load up GIMP. And we're gonna create our own custom header image for Twitter. So if you've not used GIMP before, I'll put a link in the YouTube description showing you how to install this software. I'll also put a link to my playlist showing you various other tutorials using GIMP, like how to remove backgrounds and crop images and batch process images and loads of other things. So check the YouTube description for more tutorials for GIMP. We'll go to File, New. And we'll go to File, New. We're going to set the width to 1500 pixels and set the height to 500. I'll put these dimensions also in the YouTube description. We'll set the resolution to 72 dpi for the x and y here and then fill with we want to fill it with transparency here fill with transparency everything else we can leave the same and click ok so we've got a blank canvas now i'm going to hold down the control key and use my mouse wheel to rotate one down one on the mouse wheel just to zoom out a little bit so you can hold the control key and use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out so i want to zoom out so i can see the sides here and the first thing i'll do is create a new layer so I'm going to click down here and create a new layer and with that new layer, so this little icon down here, right, bottom left, click that and set the fill with transparency again and click OK. So we've got two layers basically now and with this layer here, we want to call it background. In fact, we're going to call it, uh, let's see, we want to call this, uh, sorry, we want to call this logo space. So what is logo space? If we open up the web browser, you can see the logo is overlaid on top of the background. The background is just a picture and then when you upload your logo separately it gets overlaid on top of the background. So you may you want to make sure you don't write any text in this space here because if you write anything it won't be visible right. So if we minimize this all we'll do is go to view and we want to select show guides and select ruler here. Show ruler. So then you'll see the ruler on the side and we can now left click on the ruler and drag out a guide. And we want to drag our guide out to around here somewhere, around this sort of position, quite far in, something like this, around here. You can see this is 250, this is 500, so it's a little bit behind 500 here. And then on the way down, we want to drag around halfway point. So almost like halfway on this canvas, right? Halfway, somewhere probably around here, roughly around this sort of size. And then this space here, we want to fill it with a color. So we're going to click on the rectangle tool and we're going to draw a little box here. And the guides will help us to draw that box, right? It will snap to the guides. So we'll draw this little box. Here's our little box. Let's click on the fill tool. Let's click on the top swatch. And you can pick any color in here. It doesn't really matter. Something that's quite bright and that will stand out. Maybe like a blue, a green, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Let's pick a green color. Click OK. And then fill in the box. Now it's green. And we're going to click on the background here, this background layer. Let's go to select none, select and none. That deselects this, this square box. We'll click on the background and we're going to click back on this swatch here. And this time we're going to select white. So to get white, we're just going to drag to the top left hand corner, click OK, and then click on the background here and fill it. So make sure the fill tool is selected and fill it white. So we've got white here and this little green box. Let's go to file, save as file save as I'm going to go to my desktop and on the folder on my desktop I'm going to call this Twitter header template dash zero one dot c x c f that's the GIMP file extension we're going to call it a template because later we can use this same template over and over to change the Twitter header image uh, quite quickly let's go to save let's go to file export as and when we go to file export as, we want to click on select by file type here and we want to find JPEG. Here's JPEG, click export. And let's just set this to 100 and click export. 
The reason why I've done that is now on my desktop, I've got two I've got two pieces of content. I've got the original GIMP file that we can reuse many times to make other Twitter headers. And now we've just got this temporary file just to make sure our measurements are good. So let's click on that and go back to the website. We'll click edit profile and click on the little camera icon. So you need to be logged into your account. We'll click on the camera icon. We'll go back to my desktop and we'll select this image and click open and click apply and then click save. So now you can see this green box and this green box is like our, think of it a bit like our, our uh, reference where not to put content, not to put written content, right? So now we know don't place any written content around here, but anywhere else is good to go. Okay, so let's go to this website called Unsplash. And I want to think about putting some background image in here, but nothing too distracting because I want to write some content on top. So I'm going to look for something computer related, right? I'm a website designer. I want to do something computer related. I think this image looks pretty cool, but maybe um, we'll find something. Let's have a quick look here. Uh, maybe we'll use uh, could use something like this maybe you could maybe crop it along here I think this might work well uh, again this is down to your own preference what images that you want to use so Unsplash I'll put a link to this website in the YouTube description you can get loads and loads of free images from Unsplash it's a pretty cool website you can download tons of images from here and all free to use i'm going to actually use this one here i quite like um the books and uh, the stuff like this so let's use this one let's click download and what we'll do is open up this folder let's just make a new folder in here and call it background images and we'll just drag and drop that image into here and then we can minimize this you can download some other images maybe we'll try another one afterwards so let's go ahead and open up gimp again and we need to make sure this folder is visible on top. So we want GIMP in the background, the folder on top, and then we can simply um, drag and drop this picture into the uh, layers here, down here. So when we drag and drop it, it will display here. And you can see this background is covering it, this white background. So I'm just going to hide the white background. I'm gonna hide it. And then I'm gonna hold down the control key and zoom out. So hold down the control key, use your mouse wheel to zoom out. This yellow dotted line, let's actually select the um, the scale tool here, scale tool, this one. So we actually got the background selected, but you can see you can only see a small part of it. Uh, what we'll do for now is hide the green logo space, right? Hide this. So now we just see the background here um, on its own. Really, we should drag this up one layer. It will make more sense, right? Let's drag it to this layer here. And let's just call this main background something like this and this yellow dotted line represents the actual size of the image now what I'm going to do is click on that image and just reduce its opacity I'm going to set the opacity down to around 60% and then let's um, you can actually middle mouse click to pan here yeah? I'm going to hold the control key and zoom in a little bit more where I can just about see the, the dotted yellow line. And then I'm going to click on this main uh, background, click on the scale tool and then click on the picture. And the reason why I reduced the opacity is now I can see the background or the target canvas size in the background. So when I, when I start to shrink this down, if I shrink it too far, I know that I've gone too far. If I don't, if I, uh, don't reduce the opacity, it's a bit more difficult to work out. So I just want to drag this up a little bit to around here something around here and let's uh, use the control key to zoom in and the mouse will maybe we will shrink it down a little bit more you want to leave a gap around the sides a little bit yeah? you can click on this middle box to move it i'm just going to move it into position let's see it can actually come up a bit more to i think around here is going to be pretty good right around here let's see remember our logo is going to cover over some of the content on the side here. So I think this might be okay, we'll check it. Should be pretty good. Uh, what we'll do is click scale here, and then we'll set the opacity back all the way up to 100. So that's gonna kind of, that's gonna be kind of our background for our Twitter profile. 
and now we want to just add maybe our, our website address maybe something we do about a business you don't even have to add any text but I think it's worth putting your website address there so people can see that and maybe your company name maybe what you do um, it's up to you now right so what if, if I turn on this um, <clears throat> green logo you can see that's roughly where my logo is going to overlay right somewhere around here so I think that's going to be okay probably it would have been nice if the laptop was to the left a little bit but I think it's going to be fine because uh, if we go back to the hit if we go back to this Twitter profile you can see there's still a, a bit of a green gap here you see so we should be able to see the laptop okay the rest of the laptop just down the side here we should be able to see that okay let's undo that now let's hide um, in fact we can leave the green square there for now we can hide it it doesn't really matter let's click on the logo space here logo space we're going to create a new layer and let's just call it transparency here and we're going to call this uh let's, let's call this website address so my website address i'm going to click on the text tool and then i need to select a font so if I click on this option here, I'll see all the different fonts that I've got installed. Sometimes it's worth um, probably typing in the text first. So let's click in here and I'm going to just type www.dcpweb.co.uk and it's white text at the moment. So I'm going to press Control and A. Control A will select all of the characters. I can click here now and maybe I'll make it black and click OK. Now I can see the text there. But it's very small. <coughs> So I want to increase it. So let's increase the font size. Maybe we'll set it to, you can actually hold down the mouse button to increase it quicker. I'll probably set it to something like um, 90, yeah? Something around 90. And then we can click on the move tool and we can just move that into position. Maybe move it up to the top here somewhere, something like that. And let's just left click outside you can click on the background at the bottom the reason why i kept that layer there is if you click on it you can see what everything looks like you can click back up here maybe reposition it down to somewhere like here you can put it down the bottom here if you like i think up here is a good place i think it's a little bit too big so what we can do is just uh, click on the text tool and then we can click here select it again and just reduce its size a little bit i think around this sort of size will be good let's say it's 72 and we'll click back on the move tool here and just remove it into position where we like it. I think around here is good. And you can pick a different font. You don't have to use this particular font. Um, so I've got that there. And then uh, I just want to write something like website design and development, maybe something underneath. So let's click on that. We'll press. Um, well, in fact, what we'll do is just select it, right click. We should be able to duplicate the layer, duplicate the layer. And that will create an exact copy of that layer. So now we can just go to our move tool and just drag it down so it sits underneath so it's the same font the same style and we can click on that one that we drag down and let's click on the text tool let's select inside here press ctrl a i'm going to write website design i think i'm just going to write website design i think that's fine and we'll click on the move tool and let's just place that maybe uh, we can put it up here somewhere maybe we'll leave it around here i think I'm going to make it a bit smaller. So let's select it. Let's go to the text tool. I think we can, uh, now in fact, we have to uh, double click inside, press Control A to select it all, and then we can reduce its size. Let's set it to around 46, and we'll click on the Move tool, and we'll move that under somewhere around here. Maybe we'll center it out underneath. Let's have a look. Let's click here. I think that doesn't look quite right. Let's move it to around here. I think that's going to be okay so that's that's your basic profile twitter profile done obviously you can select a better font you can choose whichever fonts you want and now you've got a good template to work from where you can go and grab other images and change the background quite quickly so i think we'll set it to this i'm pretty happy with i think maybe we'll move this to i'm not sure if we should center it maybe we'll move that over there let's see what that looks like Think it was better where it was so let's just move that back i'm quite picky like this it takes me a bit of time to decide uh but we'll move it around here we'll leave it like that again you can come back and tweak and change this as much as you like right let's go to file save as and we'll save this as a new template so we'll save it as version 2 of the template and then we'll go back to file export as 
and Twitter header template and we'll label this number two and we'll save it as a JPEG file because we're exporting again. So we'll export and we'll leave it as 100% compression and export it. We'll minimize this and now we've got the Twitter profile here. Let's click on the edit profile here, click on the little camera icon, we'll select this new header and we'll click apply and then click save. And now I've got my new little custom Twitter header done, right? And the laptop, you can see it quickly. Do you remember I said there's a little bit of a gap here? So that all works fine. And if we were to maybe view this as it was a, as if it was on a mobile, you can see what it looks like on a mobile phone. And then as you stretch it out, it's going to switch sizes depending on um, the browser, right? And if you hold down the control key in your web browser, I'm using a Windows computer, you can zoom in and out. So as you zoom in, you can see the Twitter profile looks okay. And as you zoom right out, it looks fine as well. So making sure you don't put any text in this sort of space here is quite important. You can see why now. And now you've got another option, right? So I'll just show you one more quick thing. I'm going to go back to Unsplash and I'm going to type in, let's see, something like, um, uh, let's type in ocean, yeah? So we've got all these different ocean sort of pictures some nice type of ocean images and we'll find one that I like let's just find one quickly uh, maybe let's use something like uh, let's use this one right so I'll click on it and I'll download it so this is from unsplash again as well um, I'll put a link to this in the YouTube description so if you want to use that same ocean picture you can use that one and we we'll drag it into the background here then we'll open up GIMP software and we'll get this folder on top so we can see it. Let's open this folder and then drag and drop the ocean picture in here. Then we've got the uh, main background here. It's called main background, right? So let's double click and copy that name. Double click on it, select it and copy it. And let's call this main background dash zero two. We'll hide this main background, hide it. And now we've got this other main background, a different background. So let's select that one. We'll hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom out. We'll set its opacity down to around uh, 60%. We'll click on the scale tool, click on the image, and then scale it all the way down. Let's scale it all the way down to something like this. And then I'm going to use the control key and zoom in. Use the middle mouse to pan around. And then we'll click on this middle square and drag it up. Uh, let's see. I'm going to drag it to around sort of here. You can reduce the opacity a bit more as well. Now you can see the checkered board in the background. So you can see what's going to be used. And we want the kind of the water to be about mid midpoint. We'll click scale and then we'll set it all the way back up to 100%. Now you can see the different Twitter header. Let's go to file save as. This is a different version. So we might as well save it as version 3 GIMP file. And then we'll go to file export as. And we'll save that as JPEG 3 and click export and then export it as a 100% JPEG file. We can click save here, minimize this, close this, go up to the uh, browser, let's close this ocean, and then let's go to edit profile, camera, click on this new background, open it, and you've got an option to zoom in and out here, but you don't need to do that because we've created it at the exact correct size. Let's click apply, let's click save, and now you've got a different Twitter background. So you managed to do that, you can see very, very quickly. So once you've got your text position in the right place, you can switch out the background quite quickly. Sometimes you've got to move the text around a little bit so that it fits nicely on the image, depending on what sort of image you use. I prefer the other one, so I'm going to go to Edit Profile, click on the camera icon, select that one, click Apply, click Save, job done. Okay, so that's how you go about creating a custom Twitter header profile. You can use whatever fonts you want. Now you can use whatever background image you want. I'll put the exact dimensions you need to create the image in the YouTube description. Let's minimize this. Let's close this. That's the end of this tutorial. And I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.